To look at the efficiency of our extraction chemistry, we performed a lock inhibition validation study. We chose three inhibitors that may be present during swab collection. Coffee, which was purchased from Starbucks, was loaded onto control swabs containing either 25,000 cells or 100,000 cells. Chewing tobacco, we prepared by taking 2.5 grams of tobacco into 25 mils of sterile water and browned it in a mortar or pestle. We incubated that overnight and in the morning the slurry or the supernatant was collected and applied to the control swabs. For hematin, we resuspended this in 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide starting at 2 millimolar and then diluted the hematin and loaded them at the concentrations indicated on the slide. Three replicates for each condition and cell amounts were tested. And again, the average peak heights were calculated for each parameter. This next slide, we are showing you the results from our mock inhibition study. Again, the graphs are showing the average peak height, plus or minus the cell standard deviation for each inhibition level for the two cell loads. We did not find any significant impact on average peak heights or recovery of a full profile at any of the inhibitor levels tested in this study. I really like to see electropherograms, and so this next slide is showing you electropherograms from our coffee and tobacco slurry mock inhibition studies. As you can see, these inhibitors had no impact on recovering the DNA profile. The Y scale is set to 25,000 RFUs. All samples were concorded and genotypes are shown in the table below for the highest level of inhibitor versus no inhibitor. The top panel is no inhibitor followed by 2 microliters of coffee, 100 microliters of coffee, 10 microliters of tobacco slurry, and 100 microliters of tobacco slurry. Super name. This next slide is showing another set of electropherograms from our hematin titration study. As you can see, full profiles are still obtained when hematin is loaded at 2 millimolar hematin onto a control swab. The Y scale is also set at 25,000 RFU. The top panel ranges from 0 all the way up to 2 millimolar. This next slide is describing our PCR-based validation studies. To test the robustness of the Global Filer Express kit components, we did a mock inhibition EDTA study. In this experiment, the EDTA was added directly to the STR reagent files before being inserted onto the cartridge. The concentration of EDTA are indicated on the slide from 0.1 millimolar all the way up to 0.15 millimolar. Three replicates for each concentration was tested, and we used control swabs with 25,000 or 100,000 cells. We modified five PCR parameters to look at our validation studies. The red text are the standard conditions, and we tested plus or minus two degrees on either side of our standard conditions, and for final extension, decreased by one half or increased one and a half from the optimized condition. We look at activation, denaturation, annealing temperature, myelin extension, and PCR cycle numbers. For the PCR-based studies, we did six replicates for each condition. Control swabs with 1,000 M cells were loaded with 100,000 cells, and we calculated the average peak heights for each parameter study. In this next slide, we are showing you the results from our EDA titration experiments. We obtained full profiles for all replicates up to one millimolar of EDTA added to the STR vials. On the right, there's an electropherogram of the titrations of our EDTA study, starting with zero millimolar at the top, 
all the way up to 1.5 millimolar of EDTA. We are still retaining profiles at 1.5 millimolar EDTA. Five out of the six replicates gave us full profiles, demonstrating the robustness of the global filer expressed chemistry to chelation of magnesium chloride. Upper left-hand corner is showing a graph with the average peak height plus or minus the standard UV elevation and the percentage of alleles detected for each EDTA concentration study. As you can see, the percentage of average peak heights are decreasing with increasing EDTA concentration. And you expect to see this as magnesium chloride concentration is decreased in a PCR reaction. The lower left-hand graph is a box plot of the peak heights, showing the same trend of decreasing peak heights but increasing EDTA concentration in the SDR reaction. And they're broken out or separated by cell load of 25,000 and 100,000 cells. This next slide is showing you a summary of our PCR boundary studies. The bars are the average peak height plus or minus the standard deviation. And the optimized concentration or condition is indicated by the asterisk. We did six replicates for each of these parameters tested. The average HET ratios plus or minus the standard deviation are shown by the green lines above each condition. And the heterozygote peak height ratios were greater than 85% and ranged from 85 to 90%. As you can see, the average peak heights were not significantly different from all the conditions tested, except for increasing cycle number, which you would see and increasing peak height at 29 cycles, demonstrating that our chemistries are robust within plus or two minus two degrees of the optimal and one and a half fold changes in the conditions. 